This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are front of the house, and finally we have it here. Volkswagen ID bus. Today we're going to do range tests and see how far it can go in a single charge. So yes, I started doing it from home now. Uh, I will explain how it works, but okay, so I charged the car uh, or the van. If I say car, I mean van. Uh, technically, car is a van, right? Van, yeah, okay. Um, it's a subclass of uh, car. <laughs> but okay, so we charged the car to 100% and we are good to go. You see, we have 100% according to the display here, but according to car scanner, then we have 99.6%. So we used a little bit. You see, right now it's actually pulling something. I don't know what the heck that one is. HVAC is off. Uh, so I see at least this one, it was over uh, 75 kilowatt hours. So what we're going to do is correct for this and add 0.3 kilowatt hour to the end result. And you see the battery is uh, around 16, 17 degrees Celsius, uh, 15 to 17 degrees Celsius. That's good. And the plan is that we will start from here, from Arnabru, which is actually uh, slightly at lower elevation than um, the normal starting point. So we just correct by going a little bit slower and maybe have HVAC off for the first half an hour. So usually, uh, yeah, and then the plan is to go all the way to the north to uh, Rudsogda and then back again to, uh, what? and back to uh, Dal. And usually the consumption we get there is actually the end consumption for the whole trip. But we're gonna drive it all the way to zero, uh, almost to zero, because we want to know uh, how many kilowatt hours you can get out of this battery. So, all right, I'm gonna start the live stream soon. And then, uh, hmm, yeah, this is interesting. The windscreen is so far away from normal. So uh, I can only mount this mount, uh, this uh, holder here. The other holder is simply too short. <laughs> okay, whatever. All right, we're on the move. Well, actually we've been on the move for one hour. I'm just gonna check now. Friday, Laderstau at Ionity. Yeah, 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 okay. But yes, we had some stau out of Oslo. Uh, so that's why the, the average consumption is kind of low. But yeah, this is neat, man. That we now have uh, instrument, uh, in, that we have trip meter in the instrument cluster. Back in the days, I always had to have, the in, uh, have it here, but now we can see it here, that's nice. And also you can switch here, view. If you click here, you want to have this view, you want to have this view, or you want to go the other way around. And even see this one. Wait. Root? Oh, you can alternate between root gardens and... Yeah, all right. And then if you press OK, and then you can switch between since start and long term and then since start. Yeah, so you're going to have it in since start. So consumption right now is 205 watt hour per kilometer. Hmm, OK, not too shabby. Uh, and we are down to 88%. So, um, yeah, there is some Friday traffic now. So, um, yeah, we just have to drive quite far before we turn around at the Rutsug Dam. But oh, we have to check the weight of this car. <laughs> uh, can't, can't wait to see how heavy this beast is. Ah, oh, shit, it's kaput. Hmm, you know what? We are on fairly smooth asphalt. This one was slapped down about a year ago. And there is some noise here. When I tested it in Denmark, it was smoother asphalt over there, but over here is a different story. We have rough Norwegian asphalt. We have a slight tailwind, you see here. Uh, Mjosa is nice and calm, fairly calm today. And the weather should be okay-ish. So at this point, we have 196 watt hour per kilometer. Oh, it seems like uh, we might be able to go around 350 kilometers today. Hmm, okay. So, um, yeah, I need to check another scale, by the way. Uh, the one near Gardermoen. Uh, we'll do that after the full, uh, full lap. So we're gonna go all the way, wait. No, 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 no! Scheiße! Wait, where did it go now? Shit, no, 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 not that far up. Man, the lag. Okay, okay, okay. Here, no! Oh yeah, this comes up. Yeah, okay, yeah, I pay attention. All right, all right, all right, all right. please don't punish me. Punish me. I, 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 okay. And you go up there and then back here. <laughs> We've been driving for two hours, roughly. We are passing by Mjö's Torne now. So we just turned around at the Rudsogda and you see, Consumption right now is 194 watt hour per kilometer. We've done 144 kilometers and then GOM claims 267. See, if I add those two together, it could seem like we can go 411 kilometers, right? No, we won't. Not today, son. Not today. So, uh, yes, now it starts being a little bit interesting because we have 65% here, but then 64% here. <laughs> okay. Wow, look at, the, look at the landscape in Norway, huh? 
everything just turned orange, yellow, yeah. So many colors now this time of the year. So, right, we are still not even halfway. So, yeah, this is gonna be a long day. Oh, yeah, let me show, by the way, outside temperature. Yeah, it's visible here. 10.5 degrees. You see, this is uh, German precision. We are now at Ayontidal. Not too busy over there, but this is uh, business as usual. We have uh, one tritium charger kaput, yes. A, B, C, always be kaput. But, okay, so, um, um, okay, here, uh, we draw a little bit. I usually measure right on the bridge there, roughly. It was 226.3 kilometers. And then, of course, we draw a little bit past it to go over here. And then, according to Google, it's supposed to be 230 kilometers. So this car actually underreports distance by 1.6%. And that means that the consumption here with 207 is actually only 204, well, only 204. All right, so uh, now we're going to take a little pit stop because we've been driving for over three hours. All right, check the weight. Front axle, 1280. Oh, oops. The whole car. Oh, 2,600. Oh, well, well, well. Not too shabby. Less than fat e-tron. <laughs> wow, look at this massive traffic. Holy macaroni, there's so much cars over here today, man. Yeah, by the way, I'm just trolling you guys because everything is relative. And this kind of traffic, yeah, you'll be like, oh Bjorn, come to UK, you will see proper traffic. Well, come to Bangkok, I will show you what traffic means. But okay, but, over here though, normally it's not this busy, but today it's some kind of Höstfeire or some shit. That's why we have so many cars. So anyway, yes, uh, the consumption is 209, which is corrected around 205 watt hour per kilometer. So uh, we have done 260 kilometers roughly, and I think we can go roughly 100 more. That's it. So roughly 200, uh, 360, right? Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But oh, it's getting colder outside. 7.5 degrees Celsius now. Yeah, uh, that means that the 120 test will be even colder. Uh oh. Okay, so now we will just drive a little bit north, uh, maybe to Espa, a little bit, and then we go back and then we try to end up at Dahl. We are almost done with the test now. We have 6% left. Yeah, going kind of deep. We actually have to go deep to get the more accurate result. So I'll drive a little bit now around here before we end up at Dahl. So I can show the interior at night. Looks like this. You can change color, of course. Uh, I just chose the green right now. So uh, there is some uh, some ambient light, but I feel like there could have been more. Uh, like here, for example, no ambient light here in the cup holder. Nothing there. What about the back? Okay, I have a little bit there. Hmm. We are back at the Unity. We have a fat tyke and slurping in some juice over there. But okay, so. You see, this one I heard was actually incorrectly reported. It's not 0.25%. It's actually roughly 1%. Oh, it's 1% off. So I think right now we have roughly 1% left. This one is the one to trust. And two kilometers left, all right? And here's the stats. But you see, there is no decimal here for the distance. But we have decimal here. So we can do very accurate uh, um, estimation. Oh, what the heck? We don't have a white car? Shit! Man... They still didn't get the software right here. Tesla got this right already from 2012. <laughs> but okay, let's uh, either seven degrees. Okay, uh, let's plug in and start charging. Oh, look at that charging speed, 178 kilowatt. This is what actually goes into the battery. Ah, oh, okay, okay, I can show you here. Here's the charger. You can see that uh, this one is what uh, is delivered from the charger. So 183 kilowatt. Yeah, so some people might see this one and think that, okay, the car is taking 183. Nope, it's actually taking 178. And then I bet, uh, yeah, I bet there's some battery heating going on there, taking the, the remaining five uh, kilowatts. Wait, but this is slightly faster than the ID5. Oh, we need to do a charging test. Whoa, look at this speed, huh? 186 kilowatts. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe we should just do the charging test now. <gasps> Ah, uh, wait, wait, um, we can just do that afterwards. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Then, then we have a nice and hot battery. Wow, it's taking 500 amp. Huh? Huh? Wait, wait, what about the charger? 
the charger is now saying uh, okay 189 kilowatt all right so i stopped charging i drove a little loop i came back here with perfect temperature and now we're actually recording the charging session that will be in the charging video and look here okay so actually what we saw was that at 22 degrees celsius the heater will stop you can see here that the auxiliary power is now not in use and you see oh, we get 183 kilowatt the reason why it's not higher is because the voltage is a little bit too low but this is massive man i can't wait for the 1000 kilometer challenge <laughs> need to see how fast this thing charges all right we've been charging for a while i had some food i had some snack and i'll be watching the charging screen look at the speed at 84 percent it's taking 81 kilowatt <laughs> e-tron go home man we've been doing the i prioritized the charging test but now the problem is that it start raining uh-oh wait it's not supposed to rain now it's supposed to rain in two three hours uh this will surely affect the consumption but barely because we're almost done charging now um and i can show you that <laughs> we we actually gone for a hundred percent and you see 42 minutes <laughs> we are almost done okay but anyway yeah we just have to hurry because yeah for the few in, in the, now it's not that bad until the tarmac is soaked with, with wet road i mean or rain yeah. so yeah hopefully we'll still get okay result we are now on the high speed test oh oh it's raining now this is not ideal but i guess it will just be a wet entry then and uh, yeah either way i think the most uh, or the biggest energy drain when going at high speed is the drag of the car or the van anyway but yeah um, so we just there is no other way to uh, wait anyway so we're just going to go for it and hopefully it will be drier maybe on other sections so yeah i have to cruise at 122 123 on the speed though the consumption seems a bit high right now we have this one here and then we have this one here yeah, that reset manually so we just have to see then but i have to say the noise level here is not that bad at high speed hmm okay so far so good then I and mean, then eventually i need to measure this properly at the uh, noise measuring stretch uh, directly compared to other cars i've tested and now we see the interior at night yeah green oh i oh, actually like it okay we have oh we have the the um, the footwell is lit up here also you can see the play buttons <laughs> yeah this is nice huh and then the back we've been driving for 15 minutes now uh 30 kilometers which is almost half the or okay roughly half the or one third of the lap but you see over here it's dry it hasn't rained at all um i was planning on turning around here soon but i might go a little bit further maybe to espa to make the dry section more significant than the wet section oh and the consumption right now is 291 watt hour per kilometer but we have tailwind so once we go back <laughs> with the headwind and uphill then it will be higher and this car is equipped with the ID adaptive uh, LED matrix stuff. Zoop! Boom! Oh, awesome headlights! Oh, just like the ID3, ID4. Oh yeah, and it, it's um, matrix. You see? It, yeah, there. It blocks out the oncoming traffic. Oh yeah. See over there? Yeah. The right side is uh, lit up. And then... Yeah, this is great. I think I need to do a dedicated headlight test, but this should be... The same as the ID3, ID4. All right, we are done with the test. This is a nice and bright cabin. I like it. So yes, uh, how was it? Um, well, in the 90 test, we managed to go. Uh, we would be able to go 362 kilometers. That's uh, around 50-ish, 50, 50-60 50, kilometers lower than VLTP. But you know, it's colder today. So I guess if it was 25 degrees Celsius or 20 degrees will probably achieve over 400 kilometers and then in the high speed test it would say it was a wet dry road uh, dry run it's actually wet over here so um um i, I this is uh, the correct numbers 302 watt hour per kilometer remember that this car under reports a distance by 1.6 percent which is quite big so actually this car i mean uh, sorry, sorry this van sorry i keep saying it, but this van is actually more efficient than uh, hong chi or BYD Tang or Fat e-tron huh 
Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so, so, just to put things in perspective, that's big van here. So it means that this is probably one of the most efficient vans I've ever tested, okay? Versus some of the other vans we tested, they are in different uh, weather conditions and so on. So, um, but uh, maybe I should try to answer some questions. People have been asking me, how is the ride and everything? How is it? Well, actually, it turns out that it, it rides and handles very similar to ID3, ID4, I remember ID4, ID5, you know? I feel like I'm driving a, a, like an SUV or something, not a van. Uh, and also the sound level is pretty good. I need to test it. I'm not sure if I can test it today. But th when it comes to the seat and everything, it's just like the ID family. So it feels just the same steering wheel, user interface, everything. So yeah, overall a very good van. I think this, is, this car is going to sell like hotcakes in Norway and Europe. So that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.